So as we all unfortunately know, the 3DS and the Wii U eShops are closing in a little more than a week at the time of me filming this video. And we're gonna be losing a lot of really, really cool games. I was a big fan of the 3DS Wii U era, even though I don't have the biggest collections for either of those consoles, mainly because I was a very broke high school and college kid at the time. I still really, really love many of the titles between those two systems. The 3DS brought us so many things, Animal Crossing New Leaf, which is my favorite Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem Awakening, tons of stuff. And then the Wii U, while most of it you can find on the Switch <laughs> now, it still had so many really wonderful and unique titles as well. So it got me thinking a little bit. I haven't splurged on myself in a little while. So why not go and pick up some of the 3DS and Wii U titles that I missed? However, I'm buying them physically. And I might've gone a little overboard with what I bought. Whoops. <laughs> and I wanted to share what I picked up recently with all of you. And that is the topic of today. Hi everybody, my name is Alex aka Quality and welcome or welcome back to the channel. So the reason I picked up these games physically as opposed to digitally is honestly, aside from just preferring physical copies of games, I have a feeling, a very 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 strong feeling, and I think everybody else also has this feeling, is that while we're losing the eShop and we're losing digital access to all of those titles, the prices of the physical copies of the games left over are going to shoot way up. This always happens kind of when we get to this point of the console's life cycle slash death cycle, I guess. <laughs> so I wanted to grab a few physical copies that really mean a lot to me that I really, really wanted before it was too late and before prices got way, way too high. So these are primarily 3DS titles, but I do have two Wii U titles as well. I found that when looking at my two pre-existing game collections, I, there weren't many Wii U titles that I needed to pick up. I actually have like a decent crop of Wii U games, but there were just a few that I was missing and then a few that were just far out of my price range. And the same thing for the 3DS. So we'll get into that as we go through them. This will be a little interesting to do without the context of both of the collections. So I'm, I'm gonna give a little blurb about why I got each one of these games. So there you go. But first up in the pile, we have Majora's Mask 3D. So Majora's Mask is one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. I absolutely love it. However, I know this port isn't super great. <laughs> I know there are a lot of issues with it. So why would I pick it up? And honestly, Honestly, it's mainly because I have I have Ocarina of Time, Link Between Worlds, basically all of the Zelda games on the 3DS minus I think Hyrule Warriors because I don't have a new 3DS. So I was like, I really just kind of want to add Majora's Mask to my collection. Will I play this version? I don't know. Typically right now, I really just prefer playing on the Wii Virtual Console. That's how I grew up playing it. And that's typically how I just feel the best playing it. So. I, I don't know, but I really wanted to get it anyways. Plus, I really do like the cover a lot. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a nice one to have. The one thing too that I'm gonna note, which if it affects all but two of the 3DS pickups that I got, is you'll notice there is the World Edition sticker on some of these. So I'm not a hardcore collector, but what this means, it just means that these were games that, while they work on North American systems, they were licensed to be sold in other countries like Saudi Arabia, all of that kind of stuff. So. All it does is it really just adds this little circle and a little triangle on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but a little triangle on the back. Otherwise, it's completely the same. Like, it's completely the same. It doesn't bug me. However, if you're looking at doing something really similar to what I'm doing and buying a bunch of physical copies, especially of 3DS games, that might be something to look at. These games are typically cheaper because they're easier to find, which was the selling point for me, <laughs> honestly. But if that's gonna bug you, then be wary of the physical copies that you're buying because this is gonna show up a lot. Next up, another one that I missed and I'm still shocked to this very day that I missed on the 3DS is Bravely Default. I have not played Bravely Default 2 on the Switch yet. I haven't played any of the Bravely Default games. I, I don't know what's wrong with me because like I, it has everything that I love. I've heard that the combat in this game, it's on the best in an RPG ever. Some people really, really love it. So I'm really excited to give it a try. I'll pick up Bravely Default 2 eventually. I don't think the two games are related. So I don't think it's a requirement to have to play this one if you want to try Bravely Default 2, but I, I kind of want both. I thought about getting uh, Bravely Second End Layer, but 
The nice thing is that game was way cheaper than this one was, even being a world edition. So I feel like I have a little bit more time on that one. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm really, really hoping. But this, this is a game that I'm gonna play not super soon, but definitely going to try to fit in this year, I think. So I'm really excited. And for our next game, we have featuring Kirby. And that's Kirby Planet Robobot. I was really torn between getting this or Triple Deluxe as I didn't end up getting either for the 3DS. I wasn't the biggest Kirby fan at the time. Not that I disliked Kirby by any stretch of the imagination. I just hadn't played a lot of Kirby games and I didn't know how much of a gem Planet Robobot was going to be. So many Kirby fans that I know say that this is their favorite Kirby game of all time. So I'm really excited to finally give it a shot. Again, this is a world edition, but I just, I really wanted to have this one physically. I mean, look at Kirby. Look at Kirby, he's so cute. He's just this little robot. Oh my gosh, incredible. So I'm really, really excited. This is gonna be a nice one that's gonna be, I think, pretty easy to pick up and play whenever. I feel like Kirby does a really good job on handhelds. Like, I don't know, it's just, it just seems like the perfect pick up and play kind of game. So Kirby Planet Robobot, I really hope to pick up Triple Deluxe at some point in time. Again, kind of the same thing with uh, Bravely Second is Triple Deluxe seemed to be a, quite a bit cheaper than Planet Robobot, so I think I might still have a little bit of time. Other thing I forgot to mention is all but one of the games in the entire haul are sealed. I didn't intend for it to be that way, but some of the price points were just a little too good. I'm thinking that in the future when I pick up any more 3DS or Wii U games, I'm strictly planning on buying them used whenever I can find them for a good price. But honestly, like the magic of being able to open a 3DS game for the first time in forever, it's gonna be really special. So I'm, I'm really excited for that, honestly. <laughs> and so now we only have two more 3DS games and both of them I think are probably like my most excited purchases of the 3DS part of the haul. And first up, we have one that was previously really, really expensive and then went down in price and is now more expensive again. And that is Story of Seasons Trio of Towns. So this game, I believe is the second Story of Seasons game after the Harvest Moon Story of Seasons split, which is a whole other thing. I kind of want to do a video on that at some point because I, it was, as a longtime Harvest Moon fan, it was very confusing and I think there was a lot of confusion and like there are videos on it already, but I, I don't know. I really like talking Harvest Moon Story of Seasons. So this was, I think the second Story of Seasons game because there was Story of Seasons, Trio of Towns, and then I think there was another one before the Switch. I could be wrong. But this one I've heard is absolutely fantastic. A lot of people really, really love this game and it shows because it was super expensive for a really long time. <laughs> like really, really, really expensive. And I lucked out because again, sealed copy, brand new. I don't know if they did a reprint. The, um, the wrap on the game is kind of like crinkled, but I don't think that actually is like the front cover of the game. Like I think that is just the plastic on the outside. Regardless, um, I picked this up for like $39 brand new and then like I checked recently and it was already back up to 50, which for some people that might not be a big deal. I think it was more expensive a long time ago, but I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that I was able to get it because I didn't think I was going to get this one, but I, I'm really happy. And it just looks so cute. Like all of the art is so, so cute. If anybody wants to know some of my favorite kind of animal drawings. It's always like the Harvest Moon story of Seasons cows. <laughs> like they're so good. They're so cute. And just everything. The chickens are really good too. Just I'm so excited. I'm really, really happy to play this because I have a lot of the other Harvest Moon games on the 3DS before the split happened and they're good, but I've just heard really, really nice things about this one. So it'll be nice to play a story of Seasons game on my 3DS again. All right. And our final 3DS game and the 3DS game that inspired this whole video Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia. So after playing Fire Emblem Engage, which review coming soon, <laughs> I was in a huge Fire Emblem kick. I wanted to play Awakening again. I wanted to play Fates again, which is saying a lot. In a weird way, I didn't want to play Three Houses again because I was like, I kind of want one of the more like, you know, just a handheld experience because I played a lot of Engage handheld, which I didn't do for Three Houses. So I think maybe that's what the connection was, but I missed out on getting this game when it first came out. When this game came out, it was 2017, which at that time, I was probably at my like, brokest 
college year <laughs> and the Nintendo Switch was either coming out or just coming out. I can't remember exactly when this came out in 2017, but I knew I wasn't gonna pick it up because I didn't have the money, but now I do have the money. And this, I'm so excited. I think of all of the 3DS games, this is probably gonna be the first one that I play out of this whole haul, um, just because I've been thinking about this game for forever. And I love Celica. Even before Engage, I really just liked Celica as a character. And I know a little bit about the story. It's a remake of Fire Emblem 2, which is really cool. And I know a lot of people really love it. It has some of the best art in the series, in my opinion, just based on what I've seen. So I'm so excited. This was also not super expensive. Um, and this, I have not seen this game fluctuate in price quite a bit. I think a lot of people missed out on it because it was towards you know, it was right at the beginning of the Switch hype, I think, and like kind of towards the end of the 3DS hype. So if you're looking for a good Fire Emblem experience, then I, I say pick up this one. I can't give you my definite like review because I don't know, I haven't played it, but I know a lot of people really like it. So very excited for this one. All right, so now we are into the Wii U titles. So there are two Wii U games. As I said, my Wii U collection is pretty complete by my standards. <laughs> a lot of those games you can get on the Switch now, like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker and stuff like that, because I thought about picking that up on the Wii U, but I was like, but I could just buy it on the Switch. So that is one problem with the Wii U is like, a lot of those titles have already made it over, which is good if you already have it, but there are a few that you would have thought had would have been ported over by this point in time but did not. And this is one that I see get talked about all the time about people wanting it ported over to the Switch. Maybe we'll get it, maybe we won't, but regardless, I have it on the Wii U now and I'm so glad. Xenoblade Chronicles X. This was a late night, randomly fantastic deal purchase. So I had been looking at Xenoblade Chronicles X for like, months because as many of you know if you've been around on the channel a lot i love the xenoblade series two we're working on we're working on we're gonna start playing it really soon i love the series but i never played x this was the wii u game that i asked for for like two christmases in a row never got it so i gave up and i found this used copy this is the only used copy in the whole series and honestly in the whole video and honestly it's not in bad shape like there are a few little scuffs over here there's like a bite mark on the back, so I don't know who bit that, but honestly, it, it it's great. The disc is in like perfect condition, so I'm super happy about that. Um, but yeah, so I had been looking at this for a while and I had found it mainly coming in around like the 80, 90, sometimes 100 if it was in good quality. Like Mark, this I found for 60 bucks and I said, screw it, I'm getting it, I'm, I'm getting it, which might sound like a lot, but this game has been something that I've wanted for so long. And that was kind of the intention with this video is I only want to get games that I really, really want, not some that are going to have a collector's value at some point in time, because that's kind of not what my collecting is about, I guess. I don't know. I don't really consider myself a collector, but I kind of just have amassed certain collections over time, I guess. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a video on collecting and what it means to you, what it means to the individual. I don't know, I have a lot of ideas, but those are gonna have to wait until after my trip. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm really happy to have this. We'll definitely be diving back into this in a while. And honestly, like, it's just gonna be really nice to play an exciting game on the Wii U again. I feel like it's really gonna bring me back. Really gonna bring me back. And now, the grand finale of this whole haul, which some might argue is the best of this whole haul. Really hard to keep a straight face. But this was something that even though I had just said that I really, I really only wanted to buy games that I knew I was going to like and really wanted to play. This is, I guess the one exception, but also not really, because I do want to play it just for the experience. And that is Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. <laughs> I can't even not laugh. I can't even not laugh. Do you want to know how much this game was? The brand new complete box, both Amiibo, all three Amiibo cards, game sealed. You wanna know how much this was? $18, it was $18. How could I say no to $18 for a brand new Wii U game? Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't. And also honestly, the Amiibo alone, I love them. I don't know how much you can get the Amiibo for loose right now, but regardless I, I really couldn't pass it up for $18 so this game is horrendous I've never played it but I've watched enough gameplay to know that it's not good but I was kind of like you know what this isn't a totally 
wasteful purchase. Again, I get the Amiibo cards, I get the Amiibo, and also, I'm probably gonna stream Amiibo Festival on Twitch at some point in time with whoever I can coerce to play with me. So, it's- I, I still think it's a worthy purchase at $18. And don't worry, I think there are still plenty of copies of this, so if you want to pick up your very own copy of Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, brand new, just even for the thrill of opening a Wii U game again for the first time, th this is the one. <laughs> this is the one. So yeah, not a super huge haul, but games that in one way or another mean something to me. Even Majora's Mask 3D, which I probably might not play, but might. We'll see. I might, I kind of just want to give it a chance to see if it's as bad as everybody thinks it is. And Amiibo Festival, which is just going to be content. I, I'm really, really happy with this haul. It was honestly such a cool thing to buy all of these games and like have most of them sealed. Like, I'm gonna have a really fun time opening them and just kind of reliving the memories in a weird way. And again, as I said, like my 3DS and Wii U collections, because those systems were at the time of my life where unless I was asking for them for Christmas or taking returnables back to get money to buy a Wii U game, that was, that was basically all I was doing. I didn't have a ton of them. But if by any chance any of you want to see me do like a Wii U or 3DS collection video or any collection video of any of the systems that I have, if you're interested in seeing any of those collections, like let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know if there's any 3DS or Wii U game that you want to pick up before the eShop closes. I'd love to hear it. But yeah, if you like what you see here on the channel and want to see more, then why not consider subscribing? We have two more videos coming out before I leave for my trip, which will last about two and a half weeks, so stay tuned for those. We have another one about the eShop closure as well as my Fire Emblem Engage review, so I'm really excited for those and I hope you are too. But until next time, everybody, goodbye!